Recently, we did a video covering the six newly announced features for YouTube Shorts, up and coming features, mind you. And the very first one of those is starting to drop on iPhone. So if you have an iPhone, you may already have this. So make sure you update your app and check it out. Android, coming soon. The feature, of course, is called Collab. To show you how it works, we're gonna dive right in on my iPhone and talk about how Collab works. So you can see we're already in YouTube app. And so I'm gonna jump in and find a short. So I'm just gonna jump into my shorts feed. There's a particular one I wanna to react to just for the purposes of the tutorial. My good buddy, Justin Brown. So you can see here's Justin Brown talking, uh, doing some uh, spiel, beginning of a video on a YouTube search. And to get into the feature, we're gonna click on the remix button right down here at the bottom. And you can see we have all the usual options plus a new one. That new one is called Collab. It's the second one from the top. So I'm gonna tap on that. So as you tap on that, you're injected right into the selection tool where you can select how much of the short you wanna use. Now if you notice this, at, by default, we're set at 15 seconds, but if you tap the 15 at the top, you can actually go and sample a whole 60 seconds or up to 60 seconds, depending on the length of the short. And so we can do that, but the amount that I want is probably, let's go about 11 seconds. Now I'm gonna put my earphones in so I can hear which part I wanna keep. It's gonna like filter through like it normally does. As soon as we click next, you're kicked into the collab tool. It says there, uh, use your own camera to add your own content. Now you can see you've got Justin here on the left and got me on the right. My camera is live at the moment. If I tap the top one, I can jump to my back camera. But of course, if you're reacting, talking to the camera, you want the front facing camera. By default, it's gonna jump into there. The second option here is gonna be our framing. You can select the layout where you have the short that you're reacting to on the left, on the right, at the top, and at the bottom. Now I'm gonna stick with this bottom one, but there's one glaring issue right here right now, and that is the part with Justin is cutting off at the nose, but you can fix that. All you have to do is tap on the screen, and drag down. We're gonna tap on that once we're in here, we can drag him down so that he's framed. So you wanna get the framing to where you want it to be. Now you can't adjust the framing through the short, so you just gotta find the best frame for the part that you're using. The next option here on the menu is the timer button. This is like a countdown into your recording. If you rehearsed it and you wanna like a countdown to get psyched up, um, sometimes you don't need that. So that's optional, of course. If you need it, you can use it. Now, finally, there's a mic setting. This is to do with whether your mic is on or off. If your mic is on, it means that if you make, if you say something or you make a noise, it's gonna be recorded to the short. I can react purely uh, by emotion or visuals, and I can turn the mic off if I want to. Now for this part, we're gonna actually have the mic on because there's some other features that I need to show you later that will require my microphone. So we're gonna do this. So I'm gonna hit record. It's gonna play Justin's video and it's gonna record me at the same time. So uh, let's record 10 seconds. There's been a lot of YouTube experts claiming for a while now that YouTube search is dead. Really? It's a source of traffic for growing a YouTube channel. Do so they? In this video, I'm gonna show you why that's not the case. Oh. There's been a lot of YouTube experts. It cuts off abruptly. That's recorded. As soon as that's recorded, it kicks you out into this section here, which is like the second section of your creation tool if you're just doing using the, some of the other shorts tools. So this is where I can put text overlays on. I can actually record an additional voiceover. So I want to just react and actually do a separate voiceover. I could do that. I can do the volume. Now this is interesting. If I click into volume, I can toggle two things. The original sound is actually me. This original sound that I recorded. The collab sound is the sound from the short that you're sampling. So you can see for Justin's, 
I've got him turned down a bit, I've got me up. And so you can adjust. Sometimes you wanna actually bring the short volume down so that your reaction is the prominent thing. Because of course, you need to put a bit of you into YouTube. <laughs> So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go with what I've got the mix there now, but you can adjust that to your heart's content. In addition, we can, uh, the timeline is to time any text that we might add. And filters, of course, the usual Instagram-y type filters for the whole thing, which I'm not gonna use here. You can use them at your leisure. Now I am gonna add some text real quick. I'm just gonna sort of stick it in the middle there. That looks good. And then when we're happy with what we've got, we can click next, which takes us out to the final part of the upload process where you can give it a title, select a frame for the thumbnail, where you can make it public, unlisted, etc. Mark, mark all the, the required things, including short through mixing settings, pay promotion labels, comment settings, and do all that. Of course, once we're done, we can upload it as a short. So the question being is why is this really called collab? Because really it's one-sided, whereas the person you're sampling maybe doesn't have a say into whether you're sampling their content or not, because you can do this to any short that has remixing uh, uh, enabled on it. And as creators right now, we don't get the choice of turning that off. So any short we upload has the ability to be uh, reacted to using this collab tool. So maybe they should have called it the reaction tool. It would have been more descriptive of what it is and how you use it because the collab to me, in my mind, seems a little bit one-sided. So it's a one-sided collab, even though it's involving a different channel or you could even be reacting to your own shorts, I, I suppose. You'd be collabing with yourself. But in whichever way you do use it, it is a form of a reaction. It is reaction content, which should probably go over really well on shorts. So experiment with it, get creative with it. This is a quick and dirty way of doing it. Of course, if you go about it a different way where you go and sample and maybe download the short by some means that you're not supposed to do, it, you could be very much up for a copyright claim or a copyright strike if you use it in a way that they're not happy with or they don't give permission for. But if you use the shorts feature, if the tool allows you to do it, then you are legally covered to react to that if you use the tool on the YouTube app. So let me know what you think about the collab feature. Let me know if it's a tool that you think would be useful for using or whether it is something that uh, you might wanna do in a different way. Any thoughts you have, let me know in the comments below. If you wanna know what those six upcoming shorts features are, I did a video on it recently. You can check it out here. Well, this is Doug and I'll catch you later. A big shout out and thank you to my channel members. You know who you are and I've listed you on screen. And if you wanna become a channel member, make sure to click the join button below this video or click the link in the description.